Union Grove, Wisconsin, a drag racing hotbed. But today, it's truckers invading the Racine County Fairgrounds with monster trucks serving up their own brand of off-roading, riding right over traffic. It's an all-out shootout on a sea of destruction coming up next. This is Trucks and Tractor Power, featuring the superstars of the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Nationals Monster Truck Challenge. Welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the Nashville Network. Today we're at the Racine County Fairgrounds in Union Grove, Wisconsin for the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Northern Nationals. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Lee alongside Army Armstrong and Army. Not a whole lot of competition space out there. No, I tell you, there's not a lot of space at all out there. I'm kind of worried about this track. You don't have any room at all for left-right air. You get out of a lane, you're in trouble. And the shutdown area is basically non-existent. To be very honest, I'm basically spooked about this track and racing on it today, Gary. Well, we'll see how these guys can handle the small competition area as we return to the Dairy State. The four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Northern Nationals. We're in Union Grove, Wisconsin. A look at Andy Brass in big foot eight out of St. Louis. He is the second fastest qualifier here this afternoon. Top honors going to Fred Schaefer in barefoot. A good crowd on hand, but Army, there is a look at the very short shutdown area. Well, that area has got everybody literally standing in the corner scratching their head. They don't know how they're going to get these rascals shut down today, Gary. Round one, Barefoot the fast qualifier against Snakebite. Then it's number five qualifier, Micro Machine, and number 11, Bad Medicine. We also have number three, Taurus, Jack Wilman Sr. against John Moore's No Problem, the Carolina Crusher, and Nightmare. Also in round one, the sixth fastest qualifier, Black Stallion against Tropical Thunder, and Bigfoot 8 will take on Scott Stevens' King Crunch. Gary, one of the big stories here is the pairing of King Crunch and the Bigfoot truck. Scott Stevens is trying to get a monkey off his back. He's been on his head a whole lot this year. So we're gonna have to be watching him. But right now, all eyes on the new truck, the snake bite. And speaking of eyes on, look what happened earlier today. This was in qualifying. He's against the clock right now, and he gets in trouble off that second jump, the second set of cars, but Thru watch him power out. Throttle up, pulls it out. But right oh. here, he has no room to power okay. out. He that, can't use the throttle, and look what happened. That's the short area we're talking about. If he, had, if he had had 20 more feet before the pole, look right in the middle of the truck, there's a big pole there. He just had to just roll with it. Speaking of rolling, this guy is on a roll. You like Chevrolet, you got to know and love Fred Schaefer. Well, Fred Schaefer is the fast qualifier, which means he gets lane choice. These drivers do not like the lane that Snakebite is running in right now. And it's all Fred Schaefer, oh. Army. What a clean run. Oh, here we go again. Snake bites in trouble through the hydra barrier, and oh, look at that. Is again. anybody in the building? The storage building at the end of the track. Gary, he completely demolished it, literally ran through it. Look. Well, there's a chest freezer that he's on top, and of course the fans are on their on their feet right now, showing a concern as the safety crew members are over there, one checking on the driver and making sure no one was inside that storage unit. Let's watch again. Let's see where he gets in trouble. Once again, a short shutdown area. Short shutdown area. The problem comes at the end of the run with the back of the truck. I want you to notice when he lands down. He'll basically what we call spring the back up. See, now he's on the nose. The back comes down. Notice the rear wheel's turning. He is just along for the run. I wonder why they didn't hit the kill box to shut him off, though. He goes right through the hydro barriers. They basically would have done their job had the truck not been under a throttle up condition, Gary. Well, we are being told now that there, there was no one in that storage area. No one uh, injured. The driver is okay. Colt Cobra a bit stunned, we are being told. Now he climbs out and uh, you can see how slowly he comes out. At this point, any driver in motorsports starts to collect his thoughts, exactly. starts to clear the cobwebs out of the head to assess the damage and try to go back and reassess what happened. Well, he's coming out. First thing he did was look at the GTS fiberglass body to make sure it's okay. It's amazing. It was not torn up that much, but that truck really had an impact. That freezer must weigh about 2,000 pounds, and it just leaked right on top of it. We are happy again to report no one was in that storage area. Colt is all right. He's made his way down to Army. Colt, the rule of thumb in a sport, and we've always talked about it in the past, you get in trouble, you throttle up, and it pulls you out of trouble. Not the case today. Uh, you know, Army, this left lane, it's, uh, it's a pretty rough lane. The right lane, we, a lot of guys qualified in. It was a lot faster lane. I, uh, I drove that barefoot truck. I knew I was going to have to run hard and run fast. Uh, 
kind of throw me off the one side there and I was, the back end sprung up on me. I was powering out of it. And I was kind of looking for the, uh, the remote control guy to be killing me and uh, it never came around. And next thing I know, I was sitting in the barn down there. So, uh, you know, it's one of them freak accidents that happened. This is a pretty short track here. Um, you gotta be all, you have all your P's and Q's together when you're running out here. And you know, these boys are making it tough on me, but uh, I'm gonna keep struggling along here and I'm gonna be back. I can guarantee it. An altercation like this can certainly temper the enthusiasm once the race begins. It underscores the concern these drivers have for this short runoff area. There are the Hydra barriers. Those are plastic units filled with water. They probably would have done the job had the kill switch been activated in the truck. The drivers are concerned. Army, some comments from you. Gary, there's a lot of drama building down here at Union Grove. The left lane seems to be the point of, of concern right now. You look over our shoulder, you can tell that the track crew is having a meeting with the drivers. They're trying to figure out exactly what they can do. We're going to run the race. There's going to be a left and a right lane, but they got to figure out what they're going to do to make these lanes equal. Snakebite says no way the left lane is not the way to go. Of course, the fast qualifier in each run would have lane choice. He would take that driver's side right lane as we look at the snake bite, the truck setting on top of the debris as Colt Cobra walks away. More coming up from Union Grove. Gary Lee along with Army Armstrong at the Union Grove Wisconsin Fairgrounds for the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Northern Nationals. We have had problems here this afternoon. We're trying to get them rectified right now. Let's go back trackside and here's Army. Well, Gary, we kind of got a handle on this thing. Scott Stevens, driver of the Auto Value, you do a special. Uh, Scott, what's the word? Uh, they're, they're short in the track. You know, it's pretty evident that, you know, this left lane is not safe for the speeds we're running. And, you know, they got to worry about the crowd and the safety of these guys. You know, you've got a $100,000 truck. You've lost two of them already. And, you know, it's, everybody's got to change their whole thought of racing, the gears and everything we're set up for is racing for a longer track. We don't have time to change the gears. We've got to go on and race. The track's about half the length. But, you know, safety is what we got to worry about. And, and that's what they're changing for. You know, I'm pretty happy that they're doing it because, you know, we rolled over three times this year, and I'm not really, you know, happy about running those kind of speeds on a bad track. If it's a good track, I don't mind it, but you know, this track here is terrible. Okay. Well, Gary, that brings the point, an interesting fact that these tracks are completely different everywhere they go. There is a common denominator. It is safety. But what you're going to see for the rest of the day, I guarantee you, is just a full boogaloo throwdown. That light goes green. They're going to mash the motor and fly one time. The guy that lands is going to be the winner. Let's see who it's going to be. They're ready to go racing again. You hear from Scott Stevens, the track has been shortened. There is now the starting line in what normally would be no man's land. They have taken out or eliminated the first jump, the first set of cars, and there is the reason why, as Snakebite still on top of that crushed concession stand. One of the things we're going to see here is John Breen takes a Michael machine into the staging lanes. Is the chassis are going to be basically equal now. He'll be going up against Don Van Loo with the Dodge-powered vehicle, but all you got to do is go. You don't have to worry about landing. You can land after the race is over. So watch for some rocket rides off the starting line, Gary. And Breen gets the whole shot, and there's what you're saying. Put the pedal down. That's right. You land after the finish you line. You just pull a trigger and fly that rascal. So the micro machine takes the victory. The fans look on here. Round one from Union Grove, Wisconsin. Let's take a look again. And he won it right there with the whole shot. Well, a lot of these guys came to us through the sport of drag race, and that experience is going to pay off today, Gary. You have one of those drag racers with you now. Moving the track back or making it short, is that the right way to go? Yeah, for safety's back, I'd say it's the right way to go. You know, it's going to help some guys and hurt some guys, to tell you the truth. How about you? It'll help me because I'm running a lower gear, and i got a smaller motor, so it'll help me. Round one competition continues. We look at the youngster. This is Jack Wilman Jr., only 24 years of age. He drives Taurus out of Granite City, Illinois, up near St. Louis, and he'll be going up against no problem. The Bronco, driven by John Moore out of Lafayette, Tennessee. Now, John Moore has been around this sport a long time. He knows technically his truck could not compete with the Taurus. By the way, you're going to get to take a ride with Taurus on this run. He knows he, if he's going to get him, it's going to be on the starting line. Moore is going to go hard off the line. Watch it. Look, at he leads right with him. Now it's up to horsepower. And Torres takes yeah. it. The youngster from Granite City, Illinois, Jack Wilman Jr., takes the victory over the veteran from Tennessee. The late technology truck. We're inside of it right now. I want you to notice the driver. Watch the abuse he takes. See, the new suspensions are really absorbing a lot of the energy, so this particular race, the rest of the afternoon, will not be a chassis race. 
to just get down to brute horsepower. The Hoosier, Columbia City, Indiana's Steve Hess in Nightmare, and there is a look at Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher with some sponsorship from Big A Auto Parts. And also the four-wheel drive center on the other side, the Pendeliner people are involved in the Nightmares racing operation. So a lot of major corporations realizing they get a lot of exposures on these monster trucks. GMC, Chevrolet, let's see what's going to happen. Spin the tires at the starting line, and it's Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. Once again, the Carolina Crusher was the fourth fastest qualifier. He had lane choice. The chassis, you can see a good demonstration here. Watch the truck on the left out laying soft. Truck That's on the, the right. newer chassis, the newer That's suspension right. system. Truck on the right just bounces. And here's a look at Mike Botters out of Hagerstown, Maryland in the Black Stallion Ford. He'll go up against the Chevrolet of the former drag racer Wayne Smozanic from Jupiter, Florida, Tropical Thunder. Well, this new kid in the Black Ford is trying to come into this league, make a name for himself, ever runs a pressure run. Meanwhile, we talked earlier about the track being to the liking of a drag racer. That would have to get the odds on favor to the Tropical Thunder truck. See what happens. And it was Smozanic by what, 18 inches maybe? tell you thousands of seconds is the way they measure this thing no matter how you measure it he's coming back in the next round of elimination black style you might have to wait for another day gary there's a chevrolet fan right there he voices his approval as mosaic in the chevrolet will advance well the reaction to it ended up basically the common denominator in all forms of motorsport your sprint cars are midgets of these guys timing that's what it's all about isn't it gary well wayne has taken the helmet off and he has made his way over to you army the short spring truck, this could be the hot setup today. Everything got equal real quick. Well, yeah, because you, when you get that in-between bounce out of there, it gives the guys with a spring truck a chance to power, use the horsepower they have, and not so much rely on the suspension of the truck. And it, it could turn it around. You could see a lot of upsets like you're seeing right now. You're going to be a player. We'll see you in the next Thank round. You. And as Wayne walks away, we take a look at Bigfoot Andy Brass showing off his brand new haircut. Bigfoot 8 out of St. Louis, Missouri. He is the second fastest qualifier. There is a look at Scott Stevens out of Texas in the auto value. I noticed that Scott Stevens picked up the new Simpson hat as his crew chief goes to check out the top end of the track. They've got a problem. The truck completely shut off. I brought a, a mention about the new Simpson safety equipment because Stevens has been on his head so much this year. He's a testimonial for the safety equipment people in this sport. If they weren't building good stuff, he'd have been hurt by now. I had a chance to visit with him recently at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He and his young son were there for a visit. He said, I'm tired of getting upside down. We have to turn this season around. <laughs> Excuse the pun. Play on words. And what it is, they've got a, there's a, a little screw is the word we're getting. There was something right there. Tracy Smart holding it. This could almost be a case of sabotage. There was a wood screw. Now, why would you have a wood screw around any kind of a racing vehicle that was hung in the injector, injection throttle there? Are you trying to imply something, Army? Uh, I'll say this. That there's no reason in the world a wood screw would ever, should ever be around any kind of racing vehicle like this. Well, apparently the problem has been resolved. And this will be the final shootout in round one. Whoa! What whole a great shot. whole shot for all. Oh, but look at the horsepower of the big Ford as Bigfoot outpowers King Crunch for the victory. He literally had to catch him in the air. Yeah, but they're they're okay. They didn't tear the truck up. They landed on all fours. So psychologically, King Crunch and Scott Stevens will come out a winner. But Andy Brass literally flies to the wind, passes him in midair, Gary. That will conclude round one competition here in Wisconsin. We take a look at the pairings for round two. Barefoot, a winner, will go up against Micro Machine. Then the winner goes on to the semifinal. Also in round two, the young Jack Wilman Jr. in Taurus against Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. And in the uh, second bracket, we have the Tropical Thunder against Bigfoot 8. He was uh, the winner over King Crunch. As now we take a look at the Micro Machine to your right and barefoot to your left. Fred Schaefer, the fast qualifier here this afternoon. You know, Fred Schaefer is kind of, if there's such things as an outlaw monster truck driver, it's Fred. He just likes to race. He doesn't care what sanction body, what circuit. He just wants to line up next to anybody and race them. And as a rule, this is what he does. He beats them. He's going to be the guy to beat today, Gary Lee. Mark my word. Well, he was the fast qualifier, and look at this hole shot. I mean, he has the victory right there. Yeah, the front end's up off the ground. That's a 12,000-pound truck, and he's pulling a wheelie at the 50-foot mark. Well, there is the youngster from Granite City, Illinois, near St. Louis. Now we look at the man from uh, Carolina, the Carolina Crusher. There is Jack Wilman, Jr. 
only 24 years of age, and Gary Porter. And uh, Gary says, you don't need to announce my age, so we won't. Whoa, oh, whole shot by Gary the was asleep at the throttle. Whoa. Gary Porter simply was asleep. The light turned green, and Jack Wilman was away. Yeah, but Gary, you got to remember, they leave off an electrical starting system. He could have very... Gary, I believe he did. He red-lighted on the start of that race. There's official. He jumped the gun. You got to cut the tree to get a win, but the tree fell on him when he cut it that time. Well, uh, there is the frustration showing in father and son. Jack Wilman Jr. and Sr. as Jr. walks away, and now we look at the pairing between Ford and Chevrolet. Bigfoot, Andy Brass out of St. Louis, Missouri. That is Bigfoot 8, the two-frame truck. And there is Tropical Thunder, Wayne Smozanic from Jupiter, Florida. Noose down the far lane. Old truck in the near lane. New truck wins it. Simple as that. That's short and sweet. Andy Brass, the second fastest qualifier here in Wisconsin this afternoon, takes the victory. He'll move on to the semis. We look again as the Ford outpowers the Chevrolet. Well, the action will continue from Union Grove, Wisconsin on Trucks and Tractor Power. Stay with us. More coming up next. Gary Lee and Army Armstrong back in Union Grove, Wisconsin. That is all that remains of a concession stand storage area with snake bite on top of it. Army, this happened in round one. I want you to watch the rear suspension of the snake bike truck when it lands. The driver basically is at the whim of the rear end of the truck. It'll bounce. Now, when it lands, the rear wheels are steering him. See him? He is just along for the ride. And it had to be a thrill ride, too, Gary. Colt Cobra threw the Hydra barriers and threw the storage shed. Fortunately, no one was injured. There was no one in that shed. Colt was all right. But that's what happens with a short runoff area when these trucks get out of control. Now we have semifinal action. We take a look at Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher, against Fred Schaefer in barefoot, a pair of Chevrolets. This could be the quickest run of the day. Fred Schaefer, look for a wheels-up run. The Crusher's not going to roll over. Both of them Chevrolet. It's going to be quick. Oh, Porter leaves. Schaefer airs it out. And Schaefer oh. takes it by a fender. Fred Woo. Schaefer, the fast qualifier. And you can see why he was the fast qualifier. Look at it again, Army. They leave. Well, the whole shot, you're right, goes to Gary Porter. Gary Porter worked off a line lock like the drag racers use on the transmission to get the initial jump, but Schaefer just muscles by with that horsepower in the far lane. Well, it could have been the gearing that won it for Fred Schaefer. I think it just came down to old brute horsepower, Gary. <laughs> well, Gary Porter walks away. He realizes he has been defeated as we take a look now at Bigfoot, Andy Brass, and Micro Machine. John Breen, Ford against Chevrolet. Something that's still happening. They've changed the track and everything, but Gary, everybody that has lane choice is still going to the right side of this track. Nobody wants to come to the left. And if Bigfoot goes against Schaefer, who's going to get to go into the next, the right lane in the next round? That could be the question of the day. Well, it looks now with uh, Bigfoot winning this one with Andy Brass that our fastest two qualifiers will be matched up for the championship. And these jamborees are more than just great monster truck racing. For more information on these trucking events, call or write the special events company in Indianapolis. A look at Bob Chandler without his customary black cowboy hat. We're ready for the championship shootout. Army, some thoughts from you. Hey, Gary, remember when you were a kid and you kind of ran into the neighborhood bully? He says, you hit me, and you said, no, you hit me, you hit me first, no, you hit me first. That is not the case today. I guarantee you, somebody, when that light goes green, is going to punch the other guy as quick as they can. Like an old-time gunfight, somebody's going to sucker punch the other one. They shorten the track. Drivers have made adjustments. You've got one Ford, one Chevrolet, and there's another player here. Fred Schaefer has never won on this circuit. It's the third time that he's run here. He's been a world champion before, but he's never beaten these guys. This could be the day. But in order to do it, he's got to get past Bigfoot. They're going to the line right now. Let's see who's going to win this classic Ford and Chevrolet battle. Well, Army, as we take a look at Fred Schaefer, we have the ideal situation in bracket racing. We have the fastest two qualifiers going side by side for the championship. Bigfoot, that is Bigfoot 8, the frame tube truck out of St. Louis, Missouri, and he goes up against the Chevrolet of Barefoot. Barefoot, the fast qualifier. Andy Brass, the second fast qualifier. Horsepower is going to win it, Gary. That's what it all narrows down to. Well, Schaefer is out. Look at that. 
Schaefer takes Schaefer his first wins win. It. Schaefer wins it. They were wow. side by side, fender to fender, coming off the line. But as you indicated, horsepower will win here this afternoon. Horsepower did win. Watch the front wheels on Schaefer. He has got the feet out of the water and walking a dog as he hits that first ramp. And there you can see the length of the victory for Fred Schaefer as Andy Brass will take Bigfoot back to the trailer. And let's go down and talk to our winner. Well, Gary, persistency is a part of, of any kind of motorsport. Third time's charm for you, but man, it didn't come easy, did it, Fred? No, it didn't. There's some fast trucks out there, and it, and, uh, it was a real good race. You keep talking about the other fast trucks. You're, you know, you've always been a player. You run just as hard, and you proved it today as these guys. You've had some bad luck over the year, but all the cards went down on the table today. It was two blue trucks, and you're the winner. Yeah, thank you very much, Army. It was a good race. Thank you very much. And our congratulations to Fred Schaefer. He takes the win here. That will wrap it up from Union Grove, Wisconsin. It's time once again to do that death-defying dance step called Shake, Battle, and Roll. Call this number for Shake, Battle, and Roll 2. A 70-minute thrill ride featuring the movers and shakers of tractor pulling. Nitrous-powered mud warriors in breathtaking action. And roll with the punches as monster trucks duke it out in a sea of scrap iron. Shake, battle, and roll two. The ultimate test of speed and strength from the worlds of monster truck racing, mud bogging, and truck and tractor pulling. 1-800-538-8900 is the number to call for this offer only. Or send check or money order plus shipping and handling to this address. Visa and MasterCard accepted. No CODs. Call now. 1-800-538-8900.